So this brings us to another significant uh, point or crux in the story of our engagement with Western university-based uh, uh, presentations of Islamic civilization. Uh, and this is to do with the alleged tension between Zahir and Batin, specifically as it's manifested in the alleged ten tension between the Hanabila, who are generally reputed to be the most sort of outwardly oriented literalist of the Sunni schools, and uh, the inward traditions of, of Islam, which were identified with, with the traditions of Tasawwuf. So we find as a common theme in 19th century Orientalism um, the idea that Islam is inherently a religion of law and externals and a superficial, literalist, uh, even anthropomorphist uh, conception of, of, of God. So we find in Julius Wellhausen, for instance, the idea that there is no mysticism in Islam. We find even in the 20th century, people like Marie-Jean Mollet and Louis Massignon and some very significant Orientalists persisting in the idea that there's a tension between the Hanabila and Tasawwuf. And in particular, we find even somebody as erudite as Massignon saying that in some sense, uh, Ibn Taymiyyah, who is one of the best known of the Hanbali uh, thinkers, was actually hostile to the principle of Tasawwuf and the principle of Tariqah. This kind of Orientalist idea has been to some extent dissipated, but you still find it um, in, in, some, in some quarters. So it's important that we are aware of uh, the reality of what, what the sheikhs have been saying. We all know uh, Taqiyuddin ibn Taymiyyah, uh, the great Hanbali jurist of Damascus who dies in the year 1328 of the Western Canada. Controversial figure in his day, but we don't need to, uh, at the moment to look at those specific controversies, uh, but rather to focus on what he actually writes about Tasawwuf, because this is important. We're not talking about some of the aberrant forms of Sufism that he perceived or perhaps misunderstood in his time. We're talking about the principle of Tasawwuf as present in the major texts of Tasawwuf, for instance. The Risala of, of, of Imam Abu Qasim al-Qushayri. Al, al so if we actually look at his idea, we find that there's a certain sort of mystical spirituality already in Ibn Taymiyyah in his fiqh because he's convinced that uh, fatwa choice is very strongly driven by the idea of fitra, that the sound believer in a state of surrender to his Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala, has an active fitra that enables him to know which of the various fatwas is the correct one and what is a correct interpretation of the hadith. Most of the ulama don't actually buy into this and say, ijma' is safer, qiyas is safer, the consensus of the ulama is safer. And it's true that in contemporary times, we find some people who claim that they're following Ibn Taymiyyah to be using this idea of fitra to justify whatever their current inner turbulence might require. Fitra turns out in practice to be rather a subjective kind of notion. But what does he actually say? Well, remember he is a Hanbali. And in fact, what we're understanding now and what the ulama have always known is that there's a particularly close connection between the Ahl al-Hadith and the Hanbali madhab and the people of Tasawwuf there's a disproportionate number of Hanbali scholars who are actively involved in forms of tasawwuf. And if you read uh, Ibn Rajab's uh, Dayl ala Tabaqat al-Hanabila, and you go through hundreds and hundreds of biographies of the great Hanbali scholars and, and hadith experts, you'll see this. Uh, again and again, we find them, hundreds of them, actively committed to the path of tasawwuf, as we'd expect, because they're sound... Uh, responsible readers of the hadith and they can see as we've already looked at that this principle of tasawwuf is something that that is there from the earliest times so the Hanbalis in particular are aware of this and some of the great Hanbalis some of the great Sufis like Khawaja Abdullah Ansari uh, or uh, Abdul Qadir Jilani and many others are well known for being Sufis and and Hanbalis uh, now another figure is Ibn Qudama who is in the silsila of Ibn Taymiyyah's teachers, and as well as uh, producing some of the most significant works of Hanbali fiqh, he also writes his Kitab al-Tawwabin, which is a straight manual of traditional tasawwuf, traditional mainstream tasawwuf. And he received the khirqa, the, the pat robe of Sufi initiation, directly from his teacher, who was Abdul Qadir al-Jilani. Ibn Qudama was a disciple of Abdul Qadir al-Jilani. And another significant figure in this world was Ibn Aqil, who uh, was also very involved with, uh, with uh, Sufi techniques. So it's hardly surprising that we find Ibn Taymiyyah really enthusing about mainstream Islamic mysticism and spirituality. And it's hardly surprising that uh, if you visit Damascus, you find that he was buried in the Sufi cemetery of Damascus. 
what were his relatives thinking. They knew where his heart was. That was the appropriate place for him to be laid to rest, and nobody was surprised by that. But let's just look at a few quotes, just to kind of shatter that traditional Orientalist prejudice that Ibn Taymiyyah is in some sense against Tasawwuf. Uh, this is in Majmu'a Fatawa Ibn Taymiyyah, his famous collection of fatwas, Kitab um, Tasawwuf. And here he says, A Sufi fil haqiqa naw'un min as siddiqeen, fa huwa as siddiq alladhi iqtasa bi zuhdi wal ibadah. A Sufi in reality is a type of the siddiqeen, that is to say, the highest degrees of people who are sincere and straight and close to their Lord. He is the Siddiq who has been singled out with the blessing of Zuhud and Ibadah. In other words, his Zuhud, his Ibadah, uh, characterizes Tasawwuf and makes him in this state of being Muhtas. And then he points out that there are some scholars who've actually had a critical view of Tasawwuf. So he says, Some people have condemned the Sufis and Sufism. And those people say, They've innovated and they've departed from the Sunnah. And a number of scholars have had words reported of them in a way that's, that's well known. And some of the people of Kalam followed them. And this is really the key to understanding Ibn Taymiyyah's position. It's the normal Hanbali position on Tasawwuf. It's a beautiful, necessary Islamic science but it is a kind of alternative, a spiritual alternative to what the Hanbalis were really uncomfortable with, which was forms of speculative kalam, scholastic and philosophical theology that they thought was not warranted by the Kitab and the Sunnah, and which had been developed by later generations of scholars in order to refute rationalizing tendencies that would only use that discourse. So what we find, and it's very unusual in Islamic civilization, people critical of Tasawwuf, it tends to be uh, because they are involved in kalam, that's the real tension, not between hadith and tasawwuf, but between kalam and tasawwuf. That's the only place where you find any kind of, of real pattern. So Ibn Taymiyyah, in his love for the, the Sufis, makes this quite explicit in his fatwas. But he also warns, of course, that there are extremists. وَطَائِفَةٌ غَلَتْ فِيهِمْ وَالدَّعُوا أَنَّهُمْ أَفْضَلُوا الْخَلْقِ وَأَكْمَلُهُمْ بَعْدَ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ وَكِلَا طَرَفَيْ هَذِي الْأُمُورِ ذَمِيمٍ but there's a group amongst them who are extreme and claim that they are the best of people and the uh, most superior of all after the prophets themselves. And both of these extremes are reprehensible. In other words, to condemn Sufism, for Ibn Taymiyyah is reprehensible, but to exaggerate uh, the idea of Tasawwuf is also reprehensible. He wants something that's in the middle. Wasawab, the correct view, he says, أَنَّهُمْ مُجْتَهِدُونَ فِي طَاعَةِ اللَّهِ is that they are making the great effort in obeying Allah. As others uh, have made great efforts in obeying Allah. Amongst the Sufis, there is the one who is the foremost, brought near to Allah, thanks to the spiritual effort that he's making. And amongst them is the one who's kind of middle of the road, one of the people of the right hand. And in both of these categories, there are people who might make ijtihad or they're an effort and might make mistakes. And amongst them, there are some who sin and may repent or may not repent. But also amongst those who attribute themselves to them are those who wrong themselves and disobey their Lord. Some people have been attributed to them, in other words, have been claimed to be Sufis, but they're people of innovation and zandaqa. But amongst the true scholars of the people of Tasawwuf, they are not amongst them. كالحلاجي مثلا فإن أكثر مشايخ الطريق أنكروا وأخرجوه عن الطريق like الحلاج Ibn Taymiyyah says most of the scholars of Tasawwuf uh, repudiated his views and said that he was not part of the path this is endlessly contentious but uh, uh, Ibn Taymiyyah is saying there are some who have uh, departed from the path and that's not true uh, Tasawwuf 
فهذا أصل التصوف this is the basis of تصوف ثم إنه بعد ذلك تشعب وتنوع وصارت الصوفية ثلاثة أصناف صوفية الحقائق وصوفية الأرزاق وصوفية الرسم so this is the basis of tasawwuf and then they have branched into different uh, branches and 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 streams and there are essentially three categories the sufis of true realities and the sufis who are involved in tariqa just to make a living and sufis who are in it just for the sake of appearance and this is exactly what imam al-ghazali says if you look carefully at uh, ibn taymiyyah's view you find that basically he corresponds with imam al-ghazali's definition of tasawwuf, especially in Imam al-Ghazali's kitab, Dham al-Ghurur, where he mentions many kinds of Sufis who have gone off the track. And this threefold categorization that Ibn Taymiyyah pr proposes, the true Sufis, the Sufiyat al-Haqaiq, and the Sufiyat al-Arzaq, and the Sufiyat al-Rasm, is also a Ghazalian characterization. So we find, again, there's very little support for that older Orientalist thesis that the Hanbalis are against the Sawaf and Ibn Taymiyyah is against the Sawaf. In his fatwas, he makes it very clear that he's against certain extremists and errors amongst the people of the Sawaf, just as he's against certain errors present amongst some scholars of tafsir or present amongst some scholars of fiqh. He's against those who commit error in this science of the Sawaf. But he makes it absolutely clear that he is not uh, against it. So uh, these are just some examples, but those who know Ibn Taymiyyah well rather than selectively will be aware that he is a great enthusiast for Tasawwuf, and particularly because his own Sanad in, in Tasawwuf uh, comes from his, his, his teacher Ibn Amir, who gets it from Ibn Qudama, who gets it directly from uh, Sheikh Abdul Qadr al-Jilani. Al so there's only two intermediaries between the two sheikhs. And this is present in silsila after silsila after silsila that you can find in the libraries. Taqiyuddin ibn Taymiyyah is an important transmitter of the, the Qadri Tariqa. And of course, he writes his famous uh, commentary on the Futuh al Ghaib of Abdul Qadr al Jilani. He refers to him as Shaykhuna, our Shaykh. It's hard to find anybody in the history of Islam that ibn Taymiyyah reveres more than Abdul Qadr al Jilani. Abdul Qadir al Jilani is you know, one of the Imams of Tasawwuf, who is a Sufi if he is not. So, again, this is an effective way of knocking these uh, misunderstandings uh, on the head. Look at what he says, for instance. Ibn Taymiyyah says, I've worn the blessed khirqa, the blessed patched robe uh, of Sheikh Abdul Qadir, and between me and him, there's only two. Intermediaries, that's uh, Ibn Qudama and Ibn Abi Omar. Um, and in his, among his disciples, for instance, Ibn Kathir is generally regarded as being in the line of Ibn uh, Taymiyyah. Ibn Kathir says, uh, Al Jilani min, min, min Sadat al Mashayikh. He's one of the great ones, one of the lords of the Shaykh. And Dhabi also praises him. His the great Hanbali Sufi, and as we would expect, uh, this kind of tasawwuf is regarded as really essential. Uh, for those who sincerely, rather than on the basis of certain orientalistic misunderstandings, are following uh, Ibn Taymiyyah. So may Allah, inshallah, give us a true and uh, authentic and honest reading of our Torah, inshallah, and help us to avoid misunderstandings and unnecessary divisions between the Muslims. Barakallahu uh, fikum, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.